apologize. It's something I could look up or something like that. Why are you asking? Asking for Friday. It access for section where for the uh, midterm review. The midterm review, it had the first thing that it asked is what section you're in before you um, continued. So midterm review, now you've got my interest. What mid what mid midterm review would you be talking about? The one where it asks you um, about the course. Is this like a university thing? Um, no, it was for this class. Really? Oh, people think, yeah. The um, course evaluation is a survey, but it's kind of like midterm review or something like that. OK, I think that uh, I apologize. And obviously I'm surprised by this, so duh. OK, but <laughs> it's not something that I'm doing. OK, and actually if they're asking for the course uh, section number, then clearly I'm not doing it because I know my section, right? Yeah, so I apologize. The, back to the core part of what you were asking was what section is this? And I do yeah. apologize. I don't know it off the top of my head. I can look. Okay. That's okay. Oh, so it looks like we are section chat, six. Yeah, answer me. All right. That's a thank good you. question. I apologize. I apologize. I didn't know there was a survey. Okay, thank you. But no problems. I appreciate you uh, letting me know about that. Uh, now, hang on about four and a half seconds. Uh, what was I planning on doing? Because I had a really clever plan here, and it's all sort of going crazy on me. So just give me one moment to get my act together here and I will be so good at doing this. I had a slide I wanted to present to you. I apologize. And I just, I need just a moment to find that slide. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I, I hope I can. Oh, goodness, we're slow again. Well, I don't think I can do it. No, that's not going to be it. Huh. I wonder what I did. Huh. I had information prepared that I want to share in class today, but I have no idea where it's gone to. So we won't worry about that. Hey, everyone, thank you very much for coming to class today. I really appreciate you showing up. We've got more team presentations today. So fabulous. Mohammed, are you on my call? Yeah, I am. Excellent. Good Excellent. morning. I hope you're nice doing well, sir. It's going great. How's yours? Best day ever. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. So we uh, hopefully have a collection of teams that have submitted PowerPoints, and I believe you have access to all of them. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. Fantastic. So, Mohammed, do you have access to the slides from Team Oregon? Yeah. Okay. So I got some questions for you. you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. Does Team Oregon have a cover slide? Uh, would you like me to share the screen first? Nope. I'm asking you just okay. a question. Okay. They have an. Uh, what was that? Do, do they have do an they overview? They have a cover slide. Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Do they yeah. have an overview slide? Yes or no? Yes. Do they have a motivation slide? Yes or no? Yes. Excellent. Fantastic. Do they have a weighted benefit analysis? Yes. Excellent. Fantastic. Do they have a conclusion slide? Yes. Fantastic. And in their slide deck, do they have images of post candidate design? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. That's exactly what I need to know. So, okay. Team Oregon, who's going to start your six minute presentation off today? Uh, hello. Yes, who Jamie. is it? Uh, James Price. Mr. Price, Fabius, you've got six minutes, my friend. Take it away. Okay. Uh, I can't see the slides right now. Oh. Mohammed, you can now officially display the slides. Share your screen. OK, so hello, uh, my name is James Price. I'm the project lead for Team Oregon, and this is our candidate design presentation. Next slide, please. So just a quick overview of what to expect. We'll be going over our motivation for this project. We will then be showing you both of our candidate designs. We will break down our weighted benefit analysis table. We will then provide a description of our programming. And then finally, we will uh, just plan show you what we plan to do next. Next slide, please. Uh, so for our motivation, why it was important for us to uh, share our design with everybody. 
Uh, first off, we wanted to get feedback on our design. We wanted to know what was good with it, what was bad, what we uh, should improve on. We also wanted to self reflect on everything that we have accomplished so far. But most importantly, we wanted to inspire and teach others, which is the reason why we're building this car, because the demographic is for students K through five, and we wanted to teach them some of the basic things that engineers can do. Next slide, please. Uh, all right, I'm Matthew Gilman and I'm the design lead. So here for the first design, it's based off the cyber truck and we have sensors in the front which will follow the line on the ground. And then we have like a panel on top, which rotates and that's like the signature feature of this design. And then with the weighted benefit analysis table, uh, the first need was as a fit in eight by eight by eight inch box. And uh, we gave ours a seven for that because I mean, it should fit, right? Uh, the next need was below $40, which we think our, our design match. We shouldn't have any issues with that. Uh, next was assembly in 10 minutes or less, and that was important to us because it's for children to build and it really shouldn't be hard. And we gave ours a six because it could be a little difficult with the panel on top. Uh, next was safety, which we think is the most important thing because we don't need uh, children to get hurt. And we gave ours a nine. You know, the only liability we saw could be the panel. And then lastly, uh, appearance, we gave a five. It really wasn't that important to us but we think this design in particular looks pretty good, so we give it an eye. And that total is out to 283 on this design. Next slide. All right, and then the second design is basically just a pickup truck with sensors in the front, and yeah, it, it's pretty basic. Uh, for the fit in this one, we gave it a five. It's, it's kind of bulky, so we're not really sure if it'll fit in the box. Uh, for the price, we gave an eight, just like the first one. We don't really envision any difficulties with the price in this one. Uh, the assembly in 10 minutes or less, we gave an eight. It's really basic design, so it shouldn't be hard to build. Uh, the safety, we gave this one a seven. We only knocked it off because it's a little sharp around the edges, so that could pro uh, cause some problems there. And then for appearance, we gave it a four because it doesn't really look good. It's just a basic pickup, pickup truck. And that totals out to 240, which makes the first design our uh, final design. Next. All right, I'm Nestor Giro. I am the software lead. And programming the Roomba will require us to have all the parts properly connected and functioning properly. And so um, the programming goals would be to set up uh, the corresponding pins to you know, input output, make sure that the circuit works, um, manage memory and storage size to account for the Arduino because it's a smaller uh, device. Uh, code must be fast and efficient and must not contain unused or functions or variables. So just make it as uh, sleek as possible. Um, code must properly connect all the parts and make them work together and meet our intended goal. Make sure that um, it's formatted and readable by the rest of the team so that in case maybe somebody has questions, they don't have to worry too much about uh, what it is. Next slide, please. Hi, I'm Dana and I'm the testing lead. And so we have completed our weighted benefits table, established our candidate design and have been working on our programming. But throughout this design process, I believe that the most essential thing that we've learned is about teamwork, uh, manufacturing, and programming. Uh, we've also encountered a lot of engineers' um, problems that they face, such as lack of communication and management, especially during the pandemic. <laughs> next slide, please. Um, for our next steps, I believe um, if more time was available, I'd be focused more on uh, functionality and the design of the robot to make it more detailed and sophisticated. Uh, as of right now, we have this idea to make it more sustainable, and I believe uh, we can also incorporate that into the packaging involved when producing our robot to the customer. And we do have a couple of like set requirements, such as being able to follow a lighter line, ours is following a line, but I believe it would be beneficial to program it further to avoid certain obstacles and function better on different terrains. Thank you. Excellent, is that it?
Yes, that's all of us. <laughs> Thank it, of course, brings up an interesting question. What happened to Lucas? Yeah, so um, Matt in our, Matthew, sorry, in our team actually um, discussed both the candidate designs, but I'm not sure if he's in class today, but we just haven't heard from him in a while. So Lucas did not participate in this? No, he didn't. And did not contribute to any slides, correct? No. Okay. Cool. Excellent. That's what we need to know. Thank you very much. Good job, Team Oregon. Next team we're going to go over is Team Wyoming. Mohammed, are you still there? Yeah, ma'am. Excellent. So for so Team for Wyoming, Wyoming, did they submit the PowerPoint, PowerPoint slides? They did. Fantastic. Fantastic. Do they have a cover slide? They do. Do they have an overview slide? Yes. Do they have a motivation slide? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Do they have a weighted benefit analysis? Yeah. Excellent. Do they have a uh, conclusion slide? Yes. Excellent. And do they have images with both candidate designs? They do. Excellent. Fantastic. Team Wyoming, who will be speaking for you? Uh, hello. How are you doing? Who is this? This is Kenneth Waiting, the Excellent. project. Kenneth, you got six minutes. Kenneth, you take it away. Okay. All right. So I'm Kenneth Waiting. I'm the project engineer. This is uh, getting like a lot of feedback. Um, this is our cool robot. So um, I'm Kenneth. We have Kenneth Waiting. Uh, we have Jeremy Willis. We have Chris Hernandez. Um, Chris Hernandez might not be here today, but we have somebody covering his slides if he's not. Uh, we have Jaden James, and we have Samuel Jackson. Next, please. And we don't actually have Mecha Godzilla. Sorry. <laughs> so our objectives, uh, we have Why Wyoming, which is going to be our motivation slide. Um, that's going to be presented by me. The weighted benefit analysis, which is presented by Jeremy Willis, the design uh, examples of multiple product choices or our designs presented by Chris Hernandez or supposed to be by Chris Hernandez, possibly by Jeremy Willis. Um, a view into our programming mindset by Jaden James. Um, our conclusion slide by Samuel L. Jack or Samuel L. Jackson, sorry. And then you know what's <laughs> next also by Samuel Jackson. Next, please. So why Wyoming? We wanted to discuss like something cool about why Wyoming? Um, so Wyoming is the smallest state of uh, in the United States by total population. And like every state, it also still has two senators to represent. It also has um, the same amount of electoral votes as other states, despite having less population. We consider this similar to our team um, in that our team is small but experienced and will, uh, ex will exceed customer expectations. Um, and our team members go above and beyond their role um, Unfortunately, we might not have one here, but he did actually contribute to his slide and everything like that. So maybe that's a little bit of a small point, but um, so our robot is expected to exceed expectations, and that's why we wanted to build our robot. So next. All right. Hi, I'm Jeremy Willis. I'm the product development lead. So here we have our weighted benefit analysis. Um, our two designs, which we'll get into next, are essentially simplified. They're a catapult or a trebuchet. Um, uh, as you can see, our customer needs, we prioritize size, cost, uh, the ease of assembly and the ease of operation, plus the enclosure that we kind of designed. Um, in looking at the two designs, design two, uh, we decided that, you know, there's a little bit of a more difficulty assembling a trebuchet than there is to assemble the other part. There's just more independent pieces going on, as well as the operation It requires a little bit more, uh, user going and loading the trebuchet themselves, whereas design one will self-load and self-activate. So that leads us to a score for 325 versus 258, leading us to design one. Uh, next. So here's our two designs. On the left is more of our catapult one. It's designed, uh, if an object comes into the tray, we'll use the uh, ultrasonic sensor to determine if something is within the tray and then it will launch most likely having some side, some sort of rubber band ejection or like a reversion back between those two poles to make sure it doesn't uh, collapse on the body. And the trebuchet on the right 
you know, looks, uh, it has pretty much just a trebuchet. Uh, you'll have to load an item on it yourself, but then obviously you can have some fun activating the trebuchet. Uh, next. I'm Jaden Jensen and I'm Team Wyoming Software Lead. Our robot will use L298 and motor drivers to control the wheels and movement, just like we demonstrated in the fabrication assignment that was due Friday. Except instead of just having them go one direction, if we need to turn, we'll have one go one way, the other spin backwards, so it'll turn. Um, the design we chose to move forwards with, as you saw, has a sort of arm to throw obstacles that it finds in its path. And we'll be using the ultrasonic sensor, and we'll be trying to detect a certain distance to find if an object is actually in the little tray instead of just a wall or something in front of it. So then it knows if it's under two centimeters or whatever, it'll throw it. And we haven't completely decided if we wanted to follow a line or a light, so I just have a quick description of how both would work. If we wanted to follow a line, it would use infrared sensors like the ones shown on the left to detect high contrast between a white surface and a black line. And when one infrared receiver sees the line, it knows a turn in the direction of that infrared receiver. And the photoresistors would basically be acting the same way, one on each side. And if there's too much light on one side, it'll turn that way because it knows that that's the direction that the light is in. Next. Hey guys, Samuel Jackson. So to conclude, uh, I'd like to point out this design and the programming is both subject to change. We haven't finalized anything yet. Uh, we know there's the requirements that the robot has to be under a certain size. So we had some worries with the actual arm itself being too long to fit in the box. So we're still thinking of designs there. We came up with the idea of um, having it kind of like a lawn chair fold up. And the programming itself is also subject to change, as you just pointed out, because we haven't fully decided if it's going to follow a line or a light. And the we don't know how exactly we're going to get the sensor in. So um, we're still fully deciding in the coming next section. We will be finalizing all these designs. But I'd also like to point out that this robot is highly based on its exterior function. Practically the whole design is based off of this arm being able to lift up, throw things over it, and if this doesn't work, the robot itself is a bust. So we're dedicating a lot of time and effort to that in particular. And last, I'd just like to ensure that we have the abilities of this team to be able to get this done in a timely and proficient manner. So. It will get done. Next slide. So coming soon, like I said, the final the finalization of the design layout. We just need to make sure we have all our uh, all our actual numbers perfect, and determining how we're going to program it if we want it to follow the light or the line, and how this will fit in the design well enough. And other than that, just some continuing testing. Um, some layout and a uh, little shell version so we don't have to make the full design yet just to prove it works. Thank you. Excellent, guys. Good job. Well done by everybody. All right, Mohammed, let's talk uh, about uh, Team, Team Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. All right. So does Team so Michigan does have a cover have slide? slide? Yes. Do they have an overview slide? Yes. Do they have a motivation slide? Yes. Do they have a weighted benefit analysis? Yes. Excellent. Do they have an inclusion slide? Yeah. Excellent. And do they have images for both candidate designs? Yes. Fantastic. All right, Team Michigan. Who's going to be talking to you today? Hello, this is Daniel. Hey, Daniel, take it away. Um, good morning, everybody. Today we will be presenting you our Tesla Cybertruck design. And yes, our project was kindly sponsored by Elon Musk. Um, my name is Daniel. I am part of the amazing team Michigan, along with my mates Twyman, Jonathan, Michael, and Lewis. So let's start, please. Next slide. All right, so after reviewing several concepts and based on the rising popularity of Tesla electric cars, we decided to build our robot Inspire in a Tesla Cybertruck. Therefore, the robot is a car at its core functions, 
but personalized through its body as the famous model. Um, shortly, my friends will dive into the details of what we expect the robot to be like and how it became our final choice, as well as the steps we have made towards the construction of the robot so far and what we plan to do ahead. So, next slide, please. Moving on, I can start to give you a hint of why we decided to build this design. But first, let me ask you a question, and the answer is quite obvious. Who doesn't want a Tesla car these days? I mean, probably everybody wishes to have one. I do, but the truth is I have a Corolla park outside. Okay. However, we are all encouraged to dream. And as Team Michigan, our goal is to make this dream come through, and at least in some way. Also, back in our days when we were young and life seemed so easy, we used to play with hot wheels, but now we would like to bring a game changer for the new generations with nothing else but a Tesla Cybertruck. So yes, our motivation is the kids joy while playing with the robot and their hopes to one day be able to have a car like that. So I don't want to extend myself any longer. I'll leave you to my friend, Jonathan. All right, I'm Jonathan, the product development engineering lead. Uh, the design is based on the Tesla Cybertruck and will be explored in future slides. But for now, the hardware that is required will be basic components like the servo motor, potentiometer, the LEDs, the ultrasonic sensor, and most importantly, the Arduino, and some advanced components like the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor and a resistor. Software will be needed for our design as it will be a 3D printed and the Arduino will have to be coded. We're using SOLIDWORKS, a 3D design software to create the body and chassis of the car and using the Arduino IDE software to interact with the Arduino. Next slide. Hello, um, I'm Michael Hill. I'm the design lead. This was our first candidate design. I was took inspiration from a parade float from the homecoming parade. Uh, it's designed to follow a finger uh, as part of an educational game. Uh, so when you get to a location on the game board, you just scan a QR code and uh, reveal some information about uh, different areas on the campus. Uh, next slide, please. So this is our second candidate design. Uh, it's based off the Tesla Cybertruck. A lot of emphasis went on to the, uh, the cosmetics of it. It will uh, uh, feature you know, fully functioning LEDs, uses the ultrasonic sensor to uh, determine the distance the side and the servo motor would control uh, which direction that ultrasonic sensor is facing. Uh, it does also use the temperature and humidity sensor to get a more accurate approximation of the speed of sound. And then we'd also display uh, that information on an LCD screen that'd be uh, where the back, or rear windshield would be. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is Jonathan again. Uh, the weighted benefits and ask table is important for our group's discussion for the final design. We took what we thought was the most important customer needs and gave them weighted values. These were uh, safety, durability, educational value, feasibility, simplicity, and beauty. Given the customer needs and the values assigned to each design, our group felt that beauty, safety, and durability was most important. While concept one, the USF parade car had higher values in safety, educational value, and feasibility. Concept two, the Tesla Cybertruck ended up being the winner given the old values, overall values to each, which was 428 for concept two and 397 for concept one. When determining the values for the designs, we wanted to make values that fit our K through five age group. The table shows that the Cybertruck is the best overall fit given the customer needs and given values. Next slide. Hi, I'm Twyman, I'm the software lead for our team. Um, so our robot will be a wall fo following robot. Um, this will be achieved by coding a servo motor to rotate the ultrasonic sensor from side to side and take in readings. Uh, currently, so far, the code is flowing by defining the output and input pins, then checking those sensor readings. Um, these use, these uh, readings will then be used to define walls and call upon the directional motor functions from front, left, right, or for the robot to move backwards. 
Um, the code that we've utilized thus far uh, that we've been taught in the class, we've been using the code for motor activation as well as gathering sensor readings. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, hello, I'm Luis Negron, I'm the testing lead. Um, with regards to the two designs, we found the Tesla Cybertruck is mentioned to be the most appealing of the designs to our uh, customer needs. Uh, both designs are theoretically functional according to the uh, different uh, sketches and models we've made. And as of now, the programming and hardware works as intended with regards to making sure that the software works and uh, with the uh, parts that we have. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, with uh, regards to the fabrication and the next steps, uh, the next steps are simply fabricating the chassis, uh, making it sure it functions as intended and ensuring that the design we have in mind does work for the needs we have. Thank you. Excellent. Is that it? This is where you say yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Excellent. Very good. All right. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Well done. All right. Mohammed, we move on to Team Minnesota. Yeah. Excellent. Does Team Minnesota, good Team Minnesota turn in slides? Yes. Excellent. Do they have a cover slide? They do. Do they have an overview slide? Yes. Yeah. Do they have a motivation slide? Yes. Fantastic. Do they have a weighted benefit analysis? Yeah. Fantastic. Do they have a conclusion slide? Uh, they have a long presentation. They, yeah, yeah, they do. All right. Oh, that was a close call there. And do they have images for both candidate designs? Yes. Fantastic. All right, Team Minnesota, who will be speaking for you today? Nisa Vivian. Fantastic. Nisa, take it away. You've got six minutes. Uh, okay, I need to see the slide first. Okay. So this is Team Minnesota's design by Brandon, Hojin, Adam, Mina, and Nisa Me. Next. I'll be going over the overview. The motivation for the project, we're going to be going over the motivation for the project, the weighted analysis that we took into consideration when making our design, an image of what our candidate design look like, including the pros of each design, the programming process, and an example of what the code should look like, a conclusion slide explaining our team's next step. Next, motivation. The motivation for this project is to create a product that will satisfy the customer's needs, which are, it must be able to fit in a six by six box. It must cost less than $30. It's appealing to elementary slash middle school kids. It must be easy to assemble slash disassemble, and it must be able to follow either a wall, a person, or a line. Next. Uh, my name is Brandon Keller. I'm the design engineering lead for Team Minnesota. So we have three candidate designs total. We have yet to decide on a design. So for our first design, we have a pretty basic one. Uh, it has a detachable top, which allows for easy access to each of the components, but it also provides protection from outside elements. It will be in a classroom after all. Uh, it has a specific place for sensors, so it can follow a line. And it's a pretty simple box design, so it should be pretty easy to build from like cardboard. Next. Uh, for the second design, we have a more kid-friendly one. Uh, it contains animal features, which make it more approachable for children to build and enjoy. Uh, it also contains a simple box structure, which can be easily built from cardboard while the parts are stored inside. Next. For our last design, it's the most minimalistic one we have. It has a pretty simple chassis, which is easy to assemble and can be better for younger children because it's not as complicated. Uh, it also has a more compact uh, chassis as well, which is easy, like allows it to fit in a six by six by six box and uses less materials overall, which can be better for weight and shipping. Next. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm the uh, Team Minnesota hardware lead. So for our weighted benefit analysis, um, we took into account a lot of the uh, customer needs that were present on the PowerPoints uh, earlier on in the uh, semester. So the first customer need that we identified was this must be a follower. Uh, it's a basic function that needs to be able to complete 
and it's pretty core to what the actual project is and to what the customer needs. So this is rated a nine because it's quite important to us. But the one that we rated a 10 was that it costs less than $30. And we rated this a 10 because we realized that the cost is very important because if a school or a learning center needs to purchase this, it's gonna look for the one that is within its price range. And we realized this might be possibly the most important aspect of our design is to keep this cheap and cost effective. Next uh, is that it must be able to be assembled in four minutes or less. Oh, sorry, I <laughs> didn't mean to uh, it would still stay on the slide. Um, it must be able to be assembled in four minutes or less for experienced users and seven minutes or less for novice users. This was probably the least important for us, um, at least for me personally. Um, I rated this a six because it's still somewhat important, but uh, it's with a teacher there, I think that this has some wiggle room. Uh, next was that this fits uh, between six by six by six inch cube um, for shipping and packaging purposes. This was semi important, but we weren't so sure. Uh, we gave this a seven because overall um, it should be small enough because if they're going to be having multiple of these, you need to be able to fit them in a small space. Lastly, um, this must have an enclosure built with custom parts, either 3D printed or cardboard. Um, cardboard is what we'll be going with. Um, we rated this a nine because this, there's not much wiggle room here. We have to have this or we don't. So uh, this was pretty important to us. Next. Uh oh, are we missing Hojun? He is here. Um, although I think his mic might be giving him. Hello. Can hey, you hear me? Hojin? Yes, we can. Is this Hojun? Oh, finally, yeah. All right, take it away. Okay. Hello, my name is Hojun Lee. Uh, I'm charging over the program part of Team Minnesota, and I'm going to explain how an object moves by using the N298 motor. Everyone may know because it the base. Part, but I explained that it is most important part of our project. The first section I describe Arduino and N298. Next, please. Okay, the N298 consists, the N298 motor consists of out one to out four, thus mainly used to connect motors and there's are in in one through in four, those can be connected to Arduino and used it. It is also the base part of used to create code. Next, please. Okay, you can N298, you can connect to the Arduino from in one to in four, connected to the N298 motors. As I said before, this is base part need to make a code. For example, if in one is connected to two, the self, self code starting with int name pin one equal two, like this. You can change the name whatever you want, like int more pin one equal two. In this way, you can make other codes like easily, like this thing. And next, please. This is simple example of forward backward code is this correct code or no if not what's wrong look at the code for a few seconds okay few seconds done if you look at the third line in the forward section there's is only int and number and every code required for the semicolon Next, please. This is most important important part and the most okay. The most important part is not forget the semicolon in the code. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Mina Solomon. I'm the test engineering lead. So for the 
for our conclusion side, the next step for us is to pick our new, new design that best suits the customer's needs. Because we still haven't picked one yet. We have out of our three. Or we can also create a whole new design using their features to help based on the customer's needs. And then after that, we will start to build it and produce it. Thank you. All right, guys, very good job. Now, in all honesty, sort of one of the things we were trying to accomplish with this particular assignment was to get you guys to pick a design, right? And it looks like you guys still have not taken that step. So just as a gentle bit of encouragement for your team, you probably want to hunker down together and figure out what direction you want to go. It looks like you have three perfectly adequate candidates on the table, but you're going to have to pick one of those or some sort of combination of them and move forward, okay? Because uh, everything going forward sort of focuses on building the dang thing, right? And so you have to figure out what you want to build before you can do that. So good job, guys. You did an excellent job. Just need to make sure that you make a decision uh, fairly quickly. Mohammed, uh, did Team Utah turn in PowerPoints? Yeah, they did. Fantastic. <laughs> On the slides that they turned in, do they have a cover slide? Yes. Do they have an overview slide? Yeah. Do they have a motivation slide? Yes. Excellent. Do they have a weighted benefit analysis? Yes. Excellent. Do they have a conclusion slide? Yes. Fantastic. And finally, do they have images for both of their candidate designs? Yep. Okay, we're good to go. Team Utah, who will be speaking for you today? Hi, this is Skylin Spencer. Hey, Skylin, take it away. You got six minutes. All right, so hello, everyone. This is Team Utah's design review. Like I said, I'm Skylin Spencer, and I'm the project engineering lead. Next slide, please. All right, so as an overview of our project, we will be going through several steps that our team took in order to come to a final decision of which candidate design we will stick with and which will be ruled out. So this was done by means of a weighted benefit analysis, logistics of how smooth it will be to program and other determining factors. Um, next slide. Um, a huge motivator in this project is having the ability to successfully meet the needs of the customer within the limits we have set for ourselves through our engineering specifications. Uh, another motivator is to gear this robot toward a classroom of elementary or middle school students and supporting full classroom integration. So having a quality robot that these students can benefit from academically. Next slide. Hi, my name is Delilah, and I'm the design lead engineer for Team Utah. I'll uh, be presenting the candidate designs that we thought were particularly interesting, um, which were the robots nicknamed the Light Up UFO and the following music box. The Light Up UFO design was inspired by, as you can see, an abduction light. Its novelty point is that the blue dome will have an LED, which will light up, and it would be programmed to follow a line. The music box, on the other hand, was based on the idea of a horror movie scene where I'll follow a person while autonomously a music box will play as the robot moves. Both of the designs, however, were to appeal to the clients who are elementary and middle school students. And at the end, we did choose the following music box. Next slide, please. Hello everyone, this is JD Southwell. I'm the product development lead for Team Utah. Here we have our weighted benefit analysis. As you can see, we identified reliability and cost as the two most important customer needs. And therefore we decided to go with the following music box because it best suited the customer needs. And next slide, please. Um, hello, I'm Osvaldo Lopez Velasco. I'm the software development lead and uh, the test lead for Team Utah. Uh, picking a final design was a process of a lot of weight, weighing pros and cons. And uh, programming wise, both designs aren't too far apart, far apart as they would both be using the digital rights to, uh, command to be following some sort of light or wall. However, we, uh, we would have to program an LED to light up whenever the UFO moves and when the music ball 
music box moved, we would have to play music whenever the robot moves. We decided with the music box as it would make more sense since we wouldn't have to take into account the whole custom part of the UFO, which is the main body of programming. Next slide. Both ideas could have worked for us. We we took into account construction and programming, and after that, we decided that the music box was the better option, plus the novelty it brings is a pretty good feature for kids of a younger age. Next slide. And uh, going forward, we plan to create a plan, begin construction, and begin programming the robot so that it functions properly. And yeah, that's it. Excellent. Good job. Hey, am I missing something here? Do you guys not have a test engineering lead? Uh, I'm both. I'm You're software both? lead. Okay. All right. I just wanted to double check. Okay. Excellent. Good presentation. You guys did an excellent job. All right, Mohammed. We're on to Team Idaho. Team Idaho. Yeah. Question, did they turn in slides? Uh, let me, yeah, they did. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Do they have a cover slide? Yes. Do they have an overview slide? Mm-hmm. And do they have a motivation slide? Yeah. Excellent. Do they have a weighted benefit analysis? Yes. Excellent. Do they have a conclusion slide? Yes. Fantastic. And of course, finally, do they have images for both candidate designs? Yep. Fantastic. Team Idaho, who will be speaking to you today? Hello, that'd be me, Andrew Stockton, project lead. Fantastic. Andrew, you've got six minutes. Take it away. Uh, okay. Hello, this is uh, Team Idaho, and this is our design review presentation. Our team members include Trevor Allman, testing lead, Kaylin Radke, design lead, Brendan Narvaez, product development lead, Guillermo Medina Nieves, software lead, and again, me, Andrew Stockton, project lead. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, overview. Uh, in this presentation, we'll be talking about our motivations for the project, um, uh, the weighted benefit analysis of both designs, the characteristics in which design we're leading to for our candidate designs, the programming we have so far, and maybe some programming we're doing in the future, um, a concluding statement, and the next steps in our design process. Next slide, please. The motivation for this uh, this uh, project is to create a functional self-driving robotic vehicle, of course. We want to actually accomplish something and have it work. Um, provide educational value to elementary age children through the robot's functions. We want to hopefully inspire the younger generations to follow similar careers as us and see some uh, interest in engineering. Um, we want to create a project worthy of high marks, of course. We want to please the, the graders. And we want to succeed to an extent that contributes to the future success of the engineering department of USF. We want to do the engineering department proud and hopefully use the skills that we learn in this project and our future engineering courses. Uh, next slide, please. Hi, I'm Brandon Narvaez and I'm the product development lead. So the two candidates on our screen was uh, that we decided are made by our team members, Guillermo and Kaylin. Kaylin's design has an aesthetically pleasing figure to it as signified by the playful looking nature of the design and shapes that can be put in and taken out of the base. Features that makes great use of the product's intended audience, which are grade school kids. Guillermo's design makes use of the base with extra compartments for wiring and implementation of the batteries that will be used to power the H-bridge to power the wheel's motors. Guillermo's design also has a rectangular neck that acts as the robot's head, where the sensor will be placed to allow the robot the ability to follow the wall, as well as acting as the eyes to animate the robot. Out of these two designs, our team is gravitating more towards Guillermo's design as it is the most practical and realistic to build and implement such features. Next. Hi, I'm Kaylin Radke, the design lead. This is our weighted benefits analysis. We base our decision based on appearance, reliability, which is the ability to follow an object, cost, size, and educational value. For each of the categories, we gave each design a score of one to 10. Guillermo's design received more points than Kaylin's design. So, our final, for, for, so for our final design, we are leaning towards Guillermo's design. Next slide. Hello, I'm Guillermo and I'm, I'm the software engineer lead. I'm going to talk about the programming. So out of still now, we are still in the early stages, so we really don't have that much of a code so far. The only code we have have been the, the one we did for the fabrication assignment to move the DC motor spins. 
but they, we have already started uh, working on them. And the next slide, we have a, a preview of the code. Next slide, please. Uh, so here, it's still not fully the full code since there's still more to it and we are still working on it. But we are still working to, for, to implement further code as we also have to make code to make the ultra sensor, uh, the ultrasonic sensor work since it will be the eyes of the robot and we will also need to be make it able to move and tilt the head. So there's still plenty of coding that will need to be done. But so far we haven't seen all right. Um, Trevor Ullman, the test leader from Idaho. Um, so for uh, this conclusion, um, we're currently leading towards uh, Guillermo's robot design. Um, and we're in the planning phase of the eight steps of the engineering design process. And uh, we've all gotten to know each other and um, we're excited and prepared to continue working together to um, make sure we do the best we can. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, our next steps are uh, to decisively choose our, our robot design um, and then um, start building a model and design uh, so we can uh, start as soon as possible um, with testing and uh, build a prototype and revise as needed to uh, make sure we get the design out as soon as possible. Excellent. Good job, guys. Well done. All right, fantastic. Mohammed, we move on to Team Kansas. Did Team Kansas turn in any slides? Oh, uh, give me a second. I'm just jumping up there. All right. All right. As Team Kansas holds the breath. Yeah, they did some slides. Excellent. Fantastic. All right. Do you have a cover slide for them? Yeah. Do you have an overview slide for them? Yeah. Do you have a motivation yeah. slide for them? Yes. Fantastic. Do you have a weighted actually, benefit analysis? Actually, I don't see the motivation slide. Sorry. Oh, no motivation. Okay, that's fine. Do you have a weighted benefit analysis? Yeah. Excellent. That is fabulous. Do you have a conclusion slide? Uh, conclusions, yeah. Excellent. And do you have images of both candidate designs? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Team Kansas, who will be speaking for you today? I will today. And Stephon you are? Civil. Stefan Savol. All right, Stefan, take it away. You've got All six right. minutes. So hello, everyone. This is Team Kansas, and this is our design review presented by me, Stefan Savol, project lead, Fernanda Rossetti, design lead, Makan Shmarna, hardware lead, Michael Mohammadi, software lead, and Michael Wazirek, test lead. Next slide, please. So our overview. So today we're presenting our purpose, motivation, the candidate designs, our weighted benefit analysis, programming plans, our next steps, and our conclusion. Next slide, please. Oh. Uh, I guess the motivation slide isn't on this for some reason. Um, I've, sub I've downloaded one of the uh, PowerPoints that you guys have. Um, do you think there might be another PowerPoint that you guys have submitted with a motivation slide? I do yeah. have one. Uh, it's with the motivation slide. Can you just go to Yeah, sure. What's your name? Mukul Sharma. Okay. All right, there you go. Hey, there All right, go. so All right. our motivation. So why is this important? For the customer, robots could expose students to 
Uh, uh, okay, robots can expose us to technology and build interest. Robots can introduce new teaching opportunities like building them on their own. For our team, our motivation and why this is important is developing competencies and learning new skills that, that could route our engineering career. Next slide, please. Sorry, I think my micro was on was off. So no problem. Who is this? <laughs> so anyways, um, we can make we can um. I'm Hold gonna, on. Who's talking? Is this Fernanda? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Take it away. Okay. So my name is Fernanda, and I am design lead for Team Kansas. So now, about the design, after a meeting, we decide to move forward with the design labor in high school and increment some details on movement. This movement design and the one series of some details. We already included all the components and the way how we want the, the project to be. Uh, can you pass it on the next slide? Yeah. All right, can you? This is why we the function is to improve object or the person created and created in the small is that a model replace so this way the complex are out of the sight of a cube back so in this kind of way after we get most this we are planning to make a design we are going to create to the final and we want also to less in front of the side of the car. It looks better. And yeah, we can go. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, so hello, I'm Mukul Sharma and I'll be presenting the weighted benefit analysis uh, and the project development engineering needs. So uh, here we have five customer needs. Uh, they are feasibility, which is how easy is it to complete the robot with all the customer needs satisfied. The durability, which is how durable it is. The cost, which should be under $30. The kid friendly, which we focus on aesthetics and how safe it is and easy to assemble, which is it should be around four to seven minutes depending on the user. So we, uh, we then weigh each of the customer needs from zero to 10, considering how important it is for our design. And corresponding to each uh, customer need, we rate each of the candidate designs from a scale to zero to 10. On, an, on analyzing it, we reached a conclusion that candidate design two is better with a total of 309 in comparison to 292 for the, candidate, uh, for the first standard design. Thanks. Next, please. Hi, uh, this is Michael Mohammadi. I'm presenting the programming plan. So obviously the, the programs are going to be completed, completed in the Arduino uh, web editor. And so our robot for the design has four wheels. And we we're thinking about using, um, since we have plenty of kits, two infrared sensors, uh, one placed on each side of the robot to basically bounce off a line so once if if the robot's following a line and the line goes more towards the right wheel or the right sensor then the wheels will start to turn left and if they go towards the left wheel then or the left sensor then the wheels will start to turn right so it's basically just 
programming the infrared sensors to detect the the line that the robot follows. And um, so, yeah, next slide, please. Okay, for our next steps, we will decide on a candidate design, finalize the design. We will set up working systems with the sensors and motors all together. We will continue testing at all stages, and we will begin the physical construction of the robot and all its parts. All right, next slide. In conclusion, we have two candidate designs that we've been looking at. Our weighted benefit analysis shows that candidate design number two might fit our needs a bit better. Our robot will aim to be line following through the use of IR sensors. We still have a lot of work ahead of us. We're ready to tackle any problems that might arise. That is all. Are there any questions? Excellent, guys. Very good job. Well done. All right. Mohammed, shall we move on to our last team today? It's Team Nebraska. Yes. Fantastic. So is Team Nebraska turning any slides? Excellent. Do they have a cover slide? Yeah. Do they have an overview slide? Yeah. Do they have a motivation slide? Yes. Fantastic. Do they have a weighted method analysis? Yes. Excellent. Do they have a conclusion slide? Yeah. Okay, excellent. And do they have images and design? Yes. Fantastic. Team Nebraska, take it away. Who will be your speaker today? Hi, this is Dakota Wilson. All right, Dakota, you got six minutes. Go. All right, I just want to remind you that um, Ahmad didn't do anything for this. That's right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Go. All right. Um. I'm Dakota, the project lead for Team Nebraska, and this is our design review. Next. Um, Dalton, the design lead, will talk about our weighted benefit analysis table and design candidates. Adam, our hardware lead, will discuss the fabrication plans. And Alexios, our test lead, will talk about the program plans and our next steps. Next. Our motivation is to discuss our final design and programming plans, also to provide the kids with an educational experience to learn about engineer design and hardware. Next. Hello, I'm Dylan Spencer. I'll be your design lead for today. So here are our two candidate designs. The top one is what I've been calling the robo car, and the bottom one is what I've been calling the robo truck. The uh, top one is obviously heavily inspired with 3D printing in mind, and the bottom one has this nice open bed that you could be using for cargo. Next. So here's our way to benefit analysis. There's three things we have found that we really care about as this group in general is robustness, affordability, and simplicity of the design, maintainability and customizability, these sort of like uh, secondary focuses. Customizability and in general aesthetics have been something that our group has not been finding very important in any of the designs. And so we still have a lot to improve with our designs. As you can see there, our best design is only 85% of what we'd consider a perfect design. So there's still definitely a lot we can improve as we move forward. Next. And so this is our final design is the robo car. You see we have two versions of it. There's a version that's using entirely 3D printed parts, and there's a version that's using uh, cardboard as an alternative to reduce cost. Cardboard's robust. It's also simple. Next. All right. So. There this? are two parts. Who is this? This is this is Adam Kalmis, the hardware lead. Fantastic, and Adam. Take it away. So there are two parts on uh, the design that we chose. Uh, the chassis, which holds, you know, holds everything together, most mainly the wheels, and uh, the bed, which is attaching the Arduino and all the other parts to the chassis. Uh, so since the chassis needs to be very strong to hold the wheels we're going to 3d print it but the bed which can lie on top of the chassis uh we are 
we have the alternative of not just to 3D print it, but also to make it out of cardboard because it doesn't have to be as durable. It's just holding uh, the Arduino and stuff to the, to the chassis. And uh, we may make it out of cardboard because it is a more cost-effective option than 3D printing. Next. Hi, this is Alexios Yanakopoulos, the testing lead of Team Nebraska. For the programming as a team, we want to have our robot follow the wall using the ultrasonic sound meter. We'll set up a code with easy conditional statements to have the robot follow the wall by staying a certain distance from the wall at all times. If the robot strays too far from the wall, we'll have the robot turn back in towards the wall. To decrease the distance from the wall, we'll do vice versa. We'll have the robot turn away. If it needs to get further away, we'll have the robot turn in if it needs to get closer. Very simple if statements, and it should be done very easily once we get our final proper design in if it's cardboard or 3D printed. Next, please. In conclusion, with our candid designs being considered, this is how we will con uh, continue. We will pick the best design and adapt it to fit the criteria even better, if not already accomplished. We will start early fabrication of the robot, find issues with the design, or easy improvements we can make. After the design prototype is fabricated, we'll start testing beta code on the design proper, not just the parts of the design alone. Overall, the base of the project has been done, and we have our base design of it. And we will start moving into the prototype and fabrication phase within the next few days once the final idea of either 3D printed or cardboard is decided upon. Any questions? Excellent, guys. Good job. Well done. All right. That's it. We've made it through all of our team presentations. Congratulations to everybody who presented. You guys did exactly what I wanted you to do. Looks like you've made some serious progress, so that's very important. A number of the teams still have uh, multiple candidates they're taking a look at. I would urge you guys to uh, go ahead and you know hunker down and pick which one you're going to want to move forward with because going forward, it's all going to come down to actually constructing the robot, right? So you need to have a decision there. So for today, everybody's done an excellent job. Thank you very much for going into having the effort of creating the uh, slides and also going to the effort of actually presenting them. You all did a very good job. We are done for this week. How cool is that? Which means you've got a weekend looking at, uh, ahead of you. Remember, the team should still be meeting, right? So you guys uh, hopefully have, uh, have a design that you're interested in that you want to go ahead and implement. You now need to start to hunker down and figure out exactly how you're going to go about doing that, all right? So that the clock is ticking, <laughs> as we like to say. So uh, although we don't meet, again until next Tuesday, I would urge the teams to get together and do some planning, figure out how you can actually build this thing, start to work through some of the software and some of the hardware issues and move the ball forward. Please keep in mind, of course, that there is a pandemic going on. Over the course of the weekend, wash your hands, wear your mask, and of course, stay away from other people. Everybody stay safe. Are there any questions for me at this point in time? Word of the day. Word of the day, and that's an excellent question. I guess what I really probably should do is go ahead and share the word of the day with you. Thank you for reminding me. I have it here too, and I really should have thought of that. Two seconds and it's coming. One moment. Well, I think it is. I'll we'll just do this. Boom, word of the day today is hammer. Your task is to send the TA an email that has a subject line that says hammer. When you send that email to the TA, they will know that you are in class and they will give you full credit for showing up today. Today's word of the day is hammer. It's an email with a subject line that says hammer. Thank you very much for reminding me. All right, are there any more questions for me? Going once, going twice. All right, have a very safe weekend, and I will see you guys back in class on Tuesday. See you then.